Hey guys, happy long weekend, Labor Day weekend. Um, just chilling out in my car again. And I wanted to talk today about fear of the future because I think this is a pretty big problem with a lot of people going through this experience. And so I just kind of want to break it apart and talk about it and maybe, you know, offer you some comfort in what might be to come or what's to come in the future. So I wanted to mention before I get started that I am doing coaching again, Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday from 12 to 5 p.m. Mountain Time. So I will put the link to my online booking calendar in the description as well as a link to the uh, to my website which talks more about my story and you can read testimonials on there and you can book through there as well. So talking about fear of the future, so this topic comes up a lot in my conversations with people both during coaching sessions and just in general who are going through withdrawal or adverse reactions which basically you know have they present similarly and there's this is kind of a loaded topic because there's so many facets to it fear of like one thing that comes up a lot is you know I'm never going to be able to get sick again because I'm never going to be able to take any type of medication, antibiotic, antifungal, antiviral, steroid, um, you know, the whole gamut of medications outside of psychiatry, you people come to fear because of all of the sensitivities that they've developed. And it's a, it's an understandable fear. I went through it as well, especially in the early days. I mean, not only was I scared of anything that was in the shape of a pill, but also anything that could have any type of toxic ingredient in it. So early on in my withdrawal journey, I had a reaction to hair dye. And so that carried over into all personal care products. I was terrified to wear makeup, nail polish, uh, perfume, hairspray. Obviously I was scared to dye my hair again, laundry soap, dish soap. I mean, it just carried on into every type of cleaner, personal care product, anything that could have any type of toxic ingredient. I would go days without washing my hair, all of those things. And, and again, it's an understandable reaction because if you've been traumatized by these drugs, which most people in this space have to some degree, then you might develop fears like this. And I want to pull that apart because again, I have a lot of people saying to me, I'm terrified of being sick. I'm terrified of needing any type of treatment, any type of pharmaceutical. And not only is that part of the fear of the future, but also I get asked a lot, what about the trauma from all of this? How do you ever move on from the trauma? So I guess there's a bit of, this is a bit of a two part video. So the first thing I wanna talk about is the fear of the future as far as getting sick or needing any type of treatment, or even if you wanna go further than that, will I ever be able to wear makeup again? Will I ever be able to you know, whiten my teeth and dye my hair and these types of things, you know, have my nails done, get brought up to me a lot. And again, it's it's understandable to have these fears, especially if you've been someone who has had severe reactions and developed severe sensitivities. It is a natural response to that. But like I've talked about in other videos, there gets to be a point, and again, I'm not talking about acute. A lot of the things I talk about in these videos, I'm not talking about acute withdrawal, which by my definition is usually around six months. It can be longer than that for sure for people or shorter, but it's in my definition, when your symptoms are typically quite relentless, so they're 24 seven, you really don't get windows, you really don't experience much relief at all, except maybe when you go to sleep at night, if you can sleep at all. And then a lot of times kind of between six and 24 months off, people will start to experience windows and waves. Now this is varied also as far as timeline and pattern of recovery, but this is pretty common in this community. And one of the things that I tell people is it's really important. I believe Coach Powers calls it um, lolling and pushing, and I've called it nurturing and stretching. To It's really important to nurture the nervous system, take really good care of yourself, your body, try to baby the nervous system, I guess, for lack of a better word. Just really try to kind of scale back as far as what you're exposing yourself to, but also... In those times when you 
whether you want to call it your baseline, so maybe your symptoms are not super bad, so maybe you're not in a wave, but you're also not in a window, where you're just kind of at that baseline. When things are tolerable, they're not horrible, but they're not great, that can be a good time to start stretching. And so I think it's important to do this because it can really become an issue when the fears that you have surrounding things really... Um, make you recoil all of the time rather than trying to push yourself a little bit when you're feeling a little bit better because it is important I believe to teach the nervous system the brain the mind the body safety again and it's pretty much impossible to do when you're in acute and it can be impossible to do when you're in a wave as well so if you can take those times when things are a little bit easier and start stretching yourself now i'm not talking about exposing yourself to like alcohol and known toxic things excitotoxic like foods all of those types of things but just small things that typically to the average person would be benign but to you you've developed a fear you've developed a physiological reaction to it i think it's important to start to to do those things when you feel a little bit better and this might look different for everybody so this could be depending on your sensitivities trying new foods it could be you know trying to do something like paint your nails or you know, when it comes to supplements, and I'm not advocating that people should take supplements, but I've also seen it where people have known deficiencies in this community. They've had extensive testing done and their functional medicine doctor, their natural path, puts them on a plan to take certain vitamins or minerals they may be deficient in. And the person just outright refuses because they've developed such a fear of or a, a history of reaction to a lot of different things. And so I think it's important to to start to do that stretching. So this might look like, if you have known deficiencies, trying a tiny little dose of whatever you're deficient in. And you know, a lot of times people do react to supplements in this community. And so you might have to start with, you know, a 10th of a dose or just a tiny bit of a dose and work your way up. So there's different ways to do this. I bought, um, like empty gel capsules on Amazon and when I had to take different things or was trying different things I would I would test it by just like weighing it out, it out and maybe sectioning it into 10 parts and then putting a tenth into an empty capsule to try to take it that way. It depends on the type of, of supplement as well like um, obviously this only works for powdered capsules, powdered supplements. Um, but again, this could be anything, anything that you've developed reactions to or fears of that typically would not be a problem for you. And so I think it's important to do that because again, you can really get stuck in the fears becoming further and further and bigger and bigger and bigger to the point where you're laying in a dark room, even if you've been off the drug for quite a long time. And that's, that's what you want to avoid because it can make your quality of life nil and it can actually drive the fear response even higher because if you start avoiding absolutely everything, again, most of the problem in this experience is extreme fight or flight. Your brain, your body, your nervous system is stuck in an on position. And so trying to do those things when you're feeling a little bit better, I think is really important. And that can also build your confidence. So for me personally, um, again, I was afraid of anything in pill form. It didn't matter what it was. And so it was, again, trying to to lessen my fear and build my confidence in my body's ability to dial down those irrational responses over time and become stronger and less afraid. And so that's been an important part of my own recovery. And again, this looks different for different people. And I'm not suggesting you take supplements. I'm not suggesting, but this can be part of it for people. Again, I've seen people with known deficiencies who just weren't getting better and decided to address them. And that was really key to propelling their healing forward. And so if that's something or a position that you're in, this might be a way to approach it, both the fear of it and also approaching those deficiencies directly. And let me know your experience with that in the comments and where you're at in this process. I always encourage people when I coach them, they'll say, you know, I want to go golfing or I want to go on a little mini vacation or even just something small. Like I want to have ice cream with my family this weekend. And they'll say to me, but I'm so afraid. I'm so afraid it's going to cause. So their mind is already going catastrophic and to the end. And 
again, understandable because of the alterations in our brains after these drugs, but also just psychologically the trauma of it all. And so I always tell them, if you were feeling in a window at this moment, which typically means not 100% symptom resolution, but just you're feeling stronger and less reactive and less fearful and your symptoms are dialed way down. So I'll ask people if, and like if you were in a window right now, would you cons even consider, you know, not having ice cream because you were afraid of it? And they'll say, well, no, I don't even think about those things in a window. And so I'll say like, if if a healthy person would make the decision that this is good for them, good for their bodies, or could be good for their mind or hanging out with their family, then make a decision as if you were in that stronger frame of mind and that stronger time, like you are in a window and make your decision from that point. Even if you're not in a window right now and you're not necessarily in a wave you're just kind of in that middle ground and you you're you're afraid of ramifications of the choices but I always encourage people just try it try to push it a little bit forward even a hair's direction towards recovery and towards dialing down that fear so do that even if you go golfing for 10 minutes and have to leave it's important I think to do those types of exposures and again it builds your confidence it you know, psychologically, it builds your confidence, but also physiologically, you're exposing yourself to those things. And even if you have a tiny uptick in symptoms, just kind of sitting with that, and just being like, I know I'm safe, I know this is a rather healthy, you know, I know ice cream is not necessarily healthy, but this is not something that's typically going to be a problem for people to indulge in one time. And so that knowledge and just sitting with that and being like, okay, symptoms are upticking, but I'm going to sit with it kind of thing. And I think, again, those are important to do to build your confidence in the future, because I think it's dangerous, although understandable, but dangerous to for people to say, I can't ever be sick again. I can't ever. And they, they become so afraid of anything happening that they, they start to avoid because they don't want to have to be exposed or need to take antibiotics. And and obviously there are some precautionary things that are smart to do just in general, but when it becomes extreme, that's when it's a problem. Because again, I mean, you could go, you could dial it all the way down to living in a dark room and that's not, not necessarily going to prevent waves. It, it might prevent you being exposed to germs and maybe not getting sick, but there's always something that can potentially happen. I mean, we live you know, when you're living life, there's always some type of risk involved. And so again, building your confidence through this, these stretching activities. And again, I'm not talking about doing anything crazy, but just small things that you might be have become afraid of that, you know, at some point you need to kind of push through in order to get a quality of life again and build your confidence and the resiliency of your nervous system. The second part of it is, um, Okay, so sorry, I lose my train of thought sometimes. Um, oh, the fear of the trauma of it all. So there's a couple things I want to say about this. And a lot of people have this fear that even if the symptoms resolve, how do you get past the trauma of it all? Especially if you've had a long journey and a really intense one, this can be really tough for people. And from the conversations I've had with people who are already recovered or in late stage recovery. And also my own experience is that that trauma of it all tends to fade away. And people will even start to notice this when they get longer or more open windows. They'll say, I don't really think about it when I'm in a window. I just kind of live my life. And I said, that's, that's what happens. And you might be able to recall or you might be thinking about in those windows or when you get closer to recovery about this experience, but it's not the same like visceral reaction that you would have now when you're exposed to a trigger. It's just not the same and the trauma of it tends to fade naturally. However, if it becomes an issue and you become really stuck in that trauma, I don't think there's anything wrong with finding a competent therapist, somebody that is well versed in trauma and trauma therapies. I've also, you know, seen people try a more formal approach to address the trauma if it's something that's not maybe fading to the degree you'd like it to or quickly enough. I don't think there's anything wrong with that. However, I have seen people who try to do trauma therapy earlier on, maybe when their system isn't ready for it and it can backfire. So just being cautious, I guess, 
of I guess when you're doing that type of therapy but most people when they get further along in recovery they just know like you get to this point where you just know okay I need to take this step I need to do this and that sort of in intuition that you maybe have lost in this process which a lot of people express has happened including myself tends to return and sort of your gut your gut feelings and your rational mind is more intact and so you can make those decisions from a different place um, I wanted to say too that so one thing about the brain retraining course that I've taken which is DNRS they talk about one of the success stories said you know she was always making decisions out of fear and again when you have a super dysregulated nervous system that's pretty much par for the course but she said now I make decisions from a place of strength where and and I think that's really great and it always kind of stuck out in my mind because you deciding whether or not to eat ice cream or go golfing or engage in any type of adrenaline pumping activity or something like that it's very different to make that decision from a place of fear like this might trigger a wave even if it's something really really small and maybe typically benign that's very different from okay I'm choosing not to do this or I'm choosing to do this because it's either good for me if I'm choosing it or it's not that great for me if I'm not choosing it so to stay say for instance I don't know something like artificial sweetener it's the first thing that popped into my head you know known excitotoxin and you know they say it's dose dependent and you know so unless you're having large quantities it's safe and you know the jury's still out on that but just for, as an example um it might be something you've been actively avoiding in your journey um for fear of it triggering a wave uh triggering an uptick in symptoms whatever it might be and that's very different than getting you to a place where you're like feeling stronger and feeling better and you're like mm, I'm just not gonna choose I'm just not gonna have those types of substances because I know that they're just probably not really good for me will I have the odd one on occasion potentially but for right now I just it's just not that good for me and I'm just gonna avoid it because it's not that great for my health in general they're very different and it, they feel different when you make those decisions from those two different places and again this can be bigger decisions and this can be really 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 small decisions like someone will say to me I only eat five foods and I really want to you know it's some so-and-so's birthday or anniversary and I'm invited to this barbecue and I really want to have I don't know gluten or I really want to have a hot dog or something like that something that they adamantly avoid because of fear of reaction or history of reaction and but they're like you know what I'm, I'm tired of living like this and I just want to push forward and enjoy the company of my family for the first time in years or months and I want to have something that they're eating that I typically wouldn't avoid so I'll say to them, you know, again, think about it from when you're in a in a window or if they've never had a window before this ever happened to you, would you be hesitant to eat something like a hot dog? And if they say no, I'll say, well, here's your opportunity to kind of push through that fear and pass that fear, even if you're just having a bite. I mean, it's all a step in the right direction and taming down that response, physiological and psychological. So I hope this makes sense. Let me know if this is something that is effect you know has been on your mind or something that you might actively do i find a lot of people are in this position fear of the future fear of getting sick fear of ne needing surgery and just fear of you know i want to be eventually going to job interviews and i want to be able to wear makeup like it can be really small um and so kind of working through those exposures and i think that's really important to do so is this something that affects you and what stage are you at in recovery and have you been able to kind of push against some of those fears and, and previous reactions and get to that point where you're kind of n nurturing and stretching? Let me know in the comments and I uh, hope you guys are doing well and I'll see you next time. Bye.